And you're very welcome back to the Lads Podcast. This is episode 10. I'm Dara and I'm joined here by Dr. Research. What's your name? What? Sorry, I didn't know your name there. Yeah, thanks for telling me. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's not that just... I'm genuinely really... Sorry, what? <laughs> I'm Dr. Research and this is Dara. Hello. Welcome back to our <laughs> podcast. Dr. Research, that was... Boy, what's the crack? How are you? Very good, boy. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm not good. too bad. How are yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm good. What about you? Uh, not too bad. Week was... All oh, week was so busy for me. Okay. Yeah. I, um... I, I literally was working on the back house, as you all know. But literally, the back house, if you're yeah. a regular listener, like every single night, mm. there's kind of a load of things to do all of a sudden. So after work, which is a very physical job anyway, as I also talk about, I'm a scaffolder. Then I come home and I do that. But it's it's really rewarding. It's really nice. Exciting and I conk out and go to sleep. It's nice because eventually you live in it. Well, that's the thing, you know. Where a scaffold, I don't live in my scaffolds, you see. Well, you could. But I could, yeah. Be more I exciting. should have just made it all out of scaffolding. Though. Should, yeah. yeah. Scaffold walls, <laughs> scaffold floor. See the gaps in Scaffold them, bed. Good. Scaffold bed, yeah. Scaffold sink. Mm, nice steel scaffold bed. Brilliant. How was your week? Um, Busy, man. This is... I'm so glad... Well, we record this on a Friday evening, so you might be like, hey, I'm listening to this on a Monday. Why are they talking about the weekend? But mm. yeah, thank God it's the fucking weekend. In the last 10 days... And this is my, my job job, you know, the... the, the, the the Monday to Friday, nine to five. Yeah, I in the last ten days I've had one day off, and on that day off I was catching up and so much shit. So I've just been fuck. I haven't been able to stop going literally since Flat. about since before we started the music video because I re- I worked a week, did the music video, came out of that, worked worked through that last weekend, and I've still been working. So flat to the mat, flat to the oh, fucking bait, man. But I'm chuffing up the walls. I have a bit of that Friday feeling now, a bit of that yeah, podcast too. feeling. We're going out for a few mm. beers later, actually. We are, we are. A few bevies with the boys. And sorry later. if you listen to this first thing Monday morning, and we're talking about beers, and you're we're like, no, about, yeah, no, I don't want to, I don't want to hear this. Yeah, because um, you were out Sunday night. You were out last night. You were, and I, I saw you. I know what you is were. Is that up who to. it was? I fucking was. Yeah. Is that who? No, is that who we saw? Yeah, it was. I, I knew it. Yeah. I was like, is that? You know, it's the one person that listens to the podcast. Oh, sorry, oh, they're, yeah. they're listening. They're yeah. listening now, are they? Yeah, you forget we're fucking time travellers. Yeah. This is a fucking time travelling podcast. It is, yeah. This is episode three. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a busy week. It is just, life is busy, I guess. And sure. it's great. I'm, I'm very happy. And just one thing I want to say before we get stuck into the podcast is a massive thank you to our patrons so far. Genuinely, we were just chatting about it before mm. we started, in which we we kind of can't believe it that we yeah. have patrons. Like, yeah, but that's <laughs> it. Like, we've been, you know, half messing saying, oh, boys, come on, 50 euro a week. And, you know, obviously we plug it every week, but yeah, we're really surprised well, at how many we have for such a small podcast. Yeah, you know? and look, it's it's just extremely gratifying because yeah. we, we do put a lot of work into this. We're planning during the week. We recorded it on our Fridays. I spend the weekend, you know, a couple hours of the weekend editing and... W- we're 10 weeks into this. We've been ten doing weeks, this yeah. for 10 weeks. Yeah, no, but that, as you say, yeah, that's it because we both have our work lives and then we have our other work or whatever other activities yeah, we have Yeah, both of us have side hustles. And then every evening during the week or most evenings we're researching a bit on this, you know, mm-hmm. we're preparing for the podcast. So, so it's look, nice to that, look, that people are Basically, supporting. I just want to give a little plug and we will every week just because, look, we're too small for advertisers Yes, and we're too also too small for ad revenue. But uh, where we can, you know, get paid for our work is through Patreon. So if you're interested, even look two euro a month, you find it in the back of the couch. Yeah. Um, you also find 50 quid in the back of the couch. Though, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what kind of house you live in, but like... Oh, uh, boy, it's <laughs> growing here. Oh, no, oh, it's actually 100 oh, quid down here. Fucking, there it is. There's a ton there. <laughs> but genuinely, if you do want to support the work we do, we do love it and we do appreciate everyone who just even listens to it in mm. the first place. Um, Patreon.com forward slash The Lads Podcast. Yes, and uh, speaking of which, we'd like to thank... We had three patrons this week because we, as you all Ooh. know, we shout out a patron every week. And this week we had three. We had... Uh, Sophie, Michael, and Helena. So, thanks a million, guys, for, uh, for that's subscribing. amazing. Guys. Three in one week, we were like, that's, oh, "What a great this week!" Is cool, yeah. So, thanks. Thank you, thank you, nice sincerely, Cheers. sincerely. We'll um, no. <clears throat> we'll come to your house on your birthday party and do whatever you want. Three hour set of we we'll um, become a pinata, songs. and you can bait us. That's actually a good idea. Just bait us until see what happens. Sweets come out. Like or, we won't or, prepare you. Or just organs. Bait us and, yeah, you know, it's, whatever comes out. We won't suffer ourselves with sweets. We'll just. It's up to you. Like, like it's your birthday. <laughs> You know, <laughs> cool. Anyway, Steve, what are we discussing this week? What's on the cards? Video games. Oh, video games like FIFA, nerds like FIFA and Call of Duty. Oh God, that's not a podcast I want to listen to. Yeah, bullshit, lads. You're all playing video games. You are. You just don't know it. Life's a video game. We spoke about la- a few weeks ago. What? Eight weeks ago, 
about the gamification of dating apps. Mm-hmm. Tinder is a game, lads. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a funny thing. Um, most most apps and <clears throat> stuff they're gamified, and even like even things that you don't think are like video games, so like can, Candy Crush or Snake. If we want to go back, they're ga- they're video games. What's literally. your high score on Snake? <sighs> You'd like to know, wouldn't you? I would. Yeah. Yeah. I'd batter you with Snake. No, you wouldn't. I would look at you me. You fucking wouldn't. Look at me. Yeah, look at you, big snake. <laughs> fucking snake. You're out there working all day. What am I doing? Playing snake. Playing snake. I am. Being a snake. I don't actually have a job. I just play snake all yeah, day. Yeah, big snake. Best in Ireland. So I guess yeah, we'll talk about kind of us growing up on them because we're not even our generation. Kind of a bit before us were the generations raised on video games, and now it's just mm. it's as popular a medium as film and TV, if not bigger, in well, a sense. Yeah, and we'll get to what video games are like nowadays in mm. a while. But I agree with you. Yeah, they're they're like pure. Um, yeah, you know, exactly, man. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Jeez, that's, that's why we they're, have them. I think they're a lot I more. I can't val- articulate myself that well, and that's why we have Steve here. Yeah, I think they're probably more valued as art than they used to be. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because um, there's a, they're, they've advanced so far now. Yeah. But we'll get to that later. Sure. Why don't we first discuss um, you know, the history? You've been listening to this podcast for a few weeks now. You know we like to we like to do a little bit of history. I know, mm. we just kind of like to ground ourselves. In We're like, history teachers in our spare time. Yeah, yeah, really you know. bad ones. Mm. I kind of teach alternative history. Yeah. You know, I just kind of make up stuff that happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a time traveler, so they had to employ you. Exactly. Well, so they that's don't, they we don't know in. that. It's just it, I just happen to be a time traveler. I know, but you provided them with enough kind of clues as to what was going to happen to them tomorrow <laughs> for them to go, fuck, we better give this fella a job. Mm. Right, let's move on from that shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Steve. Uh, what's the first ever video game, Dara? Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. That was it. That's it. Crash Bandicoot 5. I know you're going to say Pong, aren't you? No, Dara, because I looked into it. But I would have said Pong if it was... <laughs> if, <laughs> if I didn't. Um, right, so if you were going to say Pong, let's listen to what Dara has to say. Uh, I was... what I. It's not really a video game, but it's kind of the first like electronic game in, in a sense. It's the, an interactive video device, The, the cathode ray tube amusement device. Okay. Is that so, what it was called? Is that the one in 1947? Yes. Yeah. The cathode ray... The <laughs> cathode ray... <laughs> did Alan Turing make this? or No, no, he made... Um, he made the actual the, he first. Ma- no, no, he Enigma did, crack he, in York. He made the Enigma boy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the cathode ray tube amusement device. Now, dear listener, you're probably like, what the fuck is that? Well, <laughs> I looked into it. I don't have a fucking clue either. Basically, Genuinely. No, right. I tried to, I was watching videos. Well, yeah, people saying, describing I it. I, was, I don't know what Do you I'm know what looking it was? at. It was go like, on, go it was for it. basically you could like change a shape. You you had like, obviously at the time it was fairly mad that you could do these things with yeah. like, but basically you could like change the shape of, and, and uh, you know. Come out with it. <laughs> you could like change the velocity of the fucking shape or whatever. Look, words, you know yourself. Yeah, or the, the that's dimensions as much as I got. It. I was like, no, I still don't. It, base, it was it was the first interactive video device, so you could argue that it was a video game. But the but first then, real game is kind of Pong. Am I right? Fifty seven was it? Bertie the Brain, nineteen fifty. Okay. Yeah, that was it. it was, look, it was basically nods and crosses. I don't think it was just on this big massive computer. It was like at events. It was at at some event. Like no mm. one owned this thing. Like it was just like. A massive demonstration. You see, the first era of games were kind of spread out a lot between the 50s and 60s and the late 40s, but they were mainly for academics and stuff to kind of experiment with For it. nerds, yeah. Not even, no, not nerds. I mean, academics is in... Um, yeah, nerds. Nerds, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, I mean, as in people who were actually um, experimenting with this technology. You know, it wasn't for commercial use. It wasn't until the 70s that it became commercial. Then yeah. you had Pong. Then we had the first generation of home games consoles. So exactly. I suppose when we think of gaming, we don't think of loads of stuff in the fringes. We always think PlayStation, yeah, YouTube. Fun fact, in the first generation of home video uh, games consoles, there was 900 consoles. What? There was 900 made, yeah. Different. In the, like in the 70s, the late 70s, as yeah, in you're talking about the golden the se- era of No, no, but not arcade golden era, my, my era, my whole. No, the golden era of arcade games was. Okay, sorry, go on. Okay, yeah, no, well, I'll, like I'll... first first gen, like really early shit. Um, the first ever console was the Magnavox Odyssey in 1972 as part of the first generation. That's interesting. I didn't actually look enough into consoles now until we got to like the 90s, so. Yeah. I looked but, at just games, but I, did, you know, I didn't know about this. Man, this is when, cool. When by the time we were in the 90s, we're in the fifth generation it's of mad, home isn't games it? consoles. Because yeah. we had, you had, there's so many, obviously, as I just said, there's fucking a billion in the first uh, generation. And then sure. 
Um, I think the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, that was 1985, I yeah, think, the third gen. There's a lot of names that start popping up as the decades go on. There, there's a few Ataris, NESs, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's the thing, because they kind of refer to the new wave, the new wave of, because obviously in the early 70s, like, that's when the commercial application of these were kind of first realized, like, oh, we could, you know, make a bit of money and sell these to homes now, because, mm. you know, for decades, technically, the technology was obviously too expensive to bring to that, but eventually they re- they found out how to, and, you know. Yep. So then they kind of cite the 1978 onwards as, like, the golden age of arcade games, so, like, Asteroids. Yeah. And yeah. Those kind of games, you know, and um, actually... Jaws 2. Jaws 2, Exactly. And then, you know, the 1980s started and you get your first colourful game, Pac-Man, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was funny, then I didn't even think of arcade games. They're technically video games. Oh, literally, exactly. Like, um, when was Mario's first appearance? 1985. No, 81. Was yeah. he? <laughs> His first appearance was in a game, an arcade game called Donkey Kong, a Nintendo arcade game. Ah, the fucker. Uh, but he was called, do you want to know what he's called? Luigi. Jumpman. Ah, damn, that, and that, then, that's way catchier. catchier. Yeah, exactly. And then they obviously... Um, but his first game was 85. With the well, NES. his first game was... Uh, yeah, exactly. Super Mario Brothers. The, yeah, Super Mario Brothers came and that was like a massive thing that um, that set sales that would that would go unmatched for decades. Literally. But uh, yeah, before that, I suppose there were more, mainly a lot of arcade games and, you know, they started finding out how to do um, more angles and stuff like... The, there was, you know, mm. a, bo- a game called Cubert, which was like a diagonal box hop and so it was like ooh. still 2D, but it was like... Ooh, like kind a of platform, up things. platform game kind of crack left to right jump on the box yeah but it was more diagonal kind of the way they were going instead of just literally that way or up and down you know Exciting so then th- you know things started to get a bit more um mad but in uh, yeah 1983 i think there was like a big video game crash in america you know oh, yeah were, pff, so that's when super mario and nintendo in japan you know they started uh... really taking off then you know so, uh, yeah. Let's race into the 90s, because I want to segue this into our... Or do you have any more history? Uh, well, I was just going to talk about te- Tetris as a... Like, we could really talk about that for a minute. Go on, Tetris talk about Tetris, by Tell Well, me, like, we think of Tetris. Tell me secrets about Tetris. You want to hear secrets about Tetris? You no. You can't play it. You can't play it. Am I'm just not allowed. Isn't it funny? Tetris is so simple, but it's so addictive. Well, man, uh, yeah. But it is. <laughs> like, especially at the time, it's like, oh, my God, you'd play it for ages, because it's like... It's such a simple concept, but it's it's... Do you think... Yeah, you would. Like, we wouldn't because we have... Man, I'm hooked on Pong. Th- yeah, there you go. Can't but think of Candy Pong. Crush. But that's basically colourful, new, spicy Tetris. <laughs> it is spicy Tetris. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is can- you heard yeah. it here. Candy Crush is spicy Tetris. Sure. But uh, yeah, do you know, so that was the first time those kind of games are created. And Snake. Snake is basically another... That kind of thing. Well, it's not. Snake is class. <laughs> <laughs> Snake is on its own level, man. Okay. Um... But yeah, that's it. And uh, you know, yeah, just to really recap, then you had The Legend of Zelda in 1986. You had oh, Final was, Fantasy geez, yeah, that's 87. These, these all started coming out. Yeah, yeah but it's actually, they were actually really early. And, and they're all the Game Boy came out in 1989. Fuck yeah. yeah, I forgot it was that early. A bit of That was a bit of a handheld gaming console. Um, I yeah, suppose, or I want big. to start bringing it into now. Let's let's boot on through the history. Because when we started to exist, it's funny. The 90s. We're, we're born the same year as the PlayStation. I know. The fourth PlayStation, gener- yeah. Fourth generation console. Which was the first 32-bit device. It's a lot of bits, but I only do with all them a lot bits. Of bits man. But they, they were obviously made, able to make like 3D graphics. Well, the in fairness, the, the Nintendo NES, I think. The Nintendo 64. There was the Super Nintendo Entertainment, yeah. the SNES. That, the, was, that was kind of, yeah, around that time as well. Yeah. I think, yeah, what, like in 96, actually, the Nintendo 64 came out, which was... Is that big? Is it a 64-bit device? Is that why? I think so. So that would I mean it's it, in the name. Yeah, so that would mean the graphics were actually better than the PlayStation 1. So uh, the listeners might be like, wow, yeah, so much history. Good job, guys. You could read Wikipedia. Or <laughs> let's let's bring it down right, to Earth. Steve, you can uh, read. Um, can you? No. Yeah, I knew it. I fucking knew someone was reading to you. Because it's on. not me. No. Nah. Because I stopped doing that years ago. I know, um, I know. What was your first ever video game by? Okay, my first ever video game was a game called it was it was on the PlayStation. Okay. I kind of have two that I'd like to talk about, and one is on the PlayStation One. Yep. And it was um, Toy Story Two. Ah yes. Three D. You're playing as Buzz. I remember. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. I remember. I never. I didn't have it. I actually play, I went back and played that game various times throughout my childhood up until about three or four years ago. I gave it a go. Brilliant. Played through it and I had a fucking blast. Great. It's actually a bit, bit challenging, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. like that, you know? Cool. 
And uh, but the one that really had a big impact on me was Crash Bandicoot. Ah, uh, yes, the classic. Oh my god, obsessed. And actually, I really look back on that. Like I played the PS One games up until you know recent until they made a remake three years ago. It's funny, it was really impressive graphics for its time. By we'll come to it because we'll go from childhood through te- to to adulthood. Because, yeah. But just to jump in it, yeah, you you missed out on a whole generation of consoles. I you, did. You. Did, did you have a PS2? You did. You had a PS2. So I had a PS1 and, and then I had a PS2. I was always a few years behind everyone. You skipped the PS3 though. Altogether. I skipped PS3 in my teen years. I didn't game. I went to PS4 when I was like 21 or something. Which is late. Well, Very, yeah, yeah. Somewhat late. It was a couple of years old. But yeah, let's jump back to the, the I suppose, late 90s, early 90s when we were children. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't have any one first game but yeah. I, there's there's a there's a lot they come together because i'll talk about my other one in a second but go on what's what what, what was I, your I, first I, you can remember okay it's it's a it's a funny one um so first of all we did have a playstation because my sister is five years older than me so they kind of got her a playstation and i my the first one i remember her really playing not so much myself was spyro spyro Into yeah the dragon okay so yeah. i played a bit of it My, mighty crack It was kind of like crash bandicoot wasn't it in that it was those kind of <laughs> graphics it was like 3d it, it was the was same yeah it was one of the ips of early playstation sure, uh, yeah. same time so i played a bit of that i remember renting games i think i rented like one of the metal gears game metal gear solid i was like way too young for it i didn't have a clue yeah. so one thing i actually this is going way back again between ages of let's say five and i want to say let's say seven or eight that's the the age one of our neighbors right he had a PlayStation 2, so obviously it was past 2001, because it came out in 2000, so yeah. young enough. Yeah. And um, he had a way older brother, so he had all these kind of did teen... teen Where did he get him? Smiths. Is he still around? No, no. Oh. Died old age. <laughs> did he? Because he, he did, was yeah, way yeah. older. Like, you <laughs> like know? He was like 50. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywho, um, so he had a load of like... Older, like, adult games. Sure. N- well, to us, they are adult. Like but the old first-person shooters and stuff? Well, not-, not Yeah, but it, I, I remember, I don't remember any of the games, because mm. it would just be, we'd go over to his house, and he'd be playing the PlayStation, we'd all kind of sit around and watch, and if we were lucky, we'd have a go. I never got a go, because he didn't really like me. Playing, t- <laughs> okay, yeah. are you, you alright? Look, right? we'll talk about it later. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I remember them being really violent. I remember vividly, Seriously. this is a funny memory I have, is I th- it was probably one of the early Grand Theft Autos, but you could oh, yeah. you could jump on, what I, he was like, lads, look at this. And he jumped on a random car and he gave them the finger in the car. And I was like, oh my God, it blew my mind. And his mom came into the room and I told him, told her, I was like, hey, we flipped off someone in the video game. And she was like, uh, What? And oh, you I, ratted, I found out, you ratted I him found out? out the hard way at a later stage that I actually had ratted him out and she banned the game from that, him because it was rude. That was your first experience of ratting someone out. Do you know when you don't know you're doing uh, it? I know, I was always ratting people. Yeah, well, look, Ratty snake boy. rat, we know Snake it. rat, that's what they call me. Snake rat. But um, yeah, I remember that going down to his ga- his house and playing just more violent games. They wouldn't have been over the top gratuitous, but just yeah. killing monsters, killing zombies, killing people and stuff. Killing, like. A bit of killing, you know? Yeah. I loved it, I lapped it up. Uh, yeah. You see, in my house then... When I got a bit older, I was like, I wanted a games console. I wanted mm. PlayStation 2 as well. Sure. And it was Christmas. And I was like, yes, PlayStation 2. And what did I get? I got a GameCube. Oh. And I always remember, good. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what the fuck? But you gone? loved it. I remember you going on about that I know, GameCube. but I remember going to my dad. I was like, oh, but I want a PS2. The guys of PS2s. He was like, no, PlayStation's too violent. We got you a GameCube. Yeah. See, my dad, my dad's on the ball with tech. Yeah, So obviously, been reading into it, he's like, uh, I don't want my, you know. I, was, it, I wasn't allowed for that reason until I was 10, I think I was allowed a PS2, but obviously I, would, I wasn't yeah. allowed violent games, you know. My Go God, on. yeah. The, the, but it was such a good decision because the games in the GameCube shaped my childhood. Yeah, Legend of Zelda, um, we, Star Wars Bounty, and a lot of Star Wars games that mm, were exclusive. Which you exclusive. loved, obviously. My God, yeah. Brilliant mm, console. Interesting. Um, Go on, so sorry, you had another game or something. Pokemon. What's that? Never That's heard what, of it. Don't know what you're on about. When you think about it, though, po- Pokemon isn't the most, like, I mean, you know, the most advanced game, the first one. Like, it, like when you compare it to what the PlayStation was starting to bring out in the Nintendo 64, because I, I think Pokemon Red and Blue came out in 96. But they're, like, they're such um, perfect games. It's really, really mm. funny. Um, they're also games that I've went back to every couple of years when I've had time off you know every the odd time in a summer holiday from school yeah yeah yeah. or like for lockdown went back and i played I pokemon gold version that was just like i had two weeks off work i was like go on life. yeah oh i had some time man and uh they're yeah they're they're like such such great games um really really addictive 
And they, yeah, really shaped the childhood because there was such a... The fact that you could bring out the Game Boy meant everyone in the park yeah. who I hung out with or in school, you'd, tr- you'd link up your fucking things and you'd trade the Pokemon or you'd fight each other and stuff. Yeah. And it was such like, it's not like violence, but you're still kind of getting this competitive oh, thing. Chale- yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's, it's just okay. Fight. It's just like uh, cockfighting, you, you can make the you can make your animals fight. Make your wild, <laughs> just once you're not doing animals it with fight. Like, yeah, once you're not doing it with We're not you. fighting. You're going to make the animals burn each other. Remember that as a kid watching um, Pokemon or playing Pokemon, you know, Thinking you beat them. And I, I was a sensitive kid, so I was just like, does he kill him? And I was like, no, well, no, he's only fainted. sleeping. They fainted. fainted. That's grand. what it says. They fainted. But that was so, like, I mean, it was it became like a social thing in some way um, when you were outside doing it. Ah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting. Like, I think the first two versions of, the, of those games were like, like anyone listening has played them. You had Red and Blue, which were like really, they, mm. they I mean, the, that game inspired a series that's still going on today. Yes. Probably shy to have watched it in years, but look, the, kid, <laughs> the kids like it, you know. Do they still, I tra- wonder? I like. Oh, the, it's still going, man. The peak of Pokemon was the late 90s, though. Yeah, it absolutely. It had the manga, it had the anime. The and Amer- the, the American, trade and card the game. The American dubbed anime. Then the, the, oh. Which, well, it's a Japanese anime, but yeah, the American dubbed it, and it's very popular over there in Europe. Yeah. But that, that's uh, still going. I mean, Ash is still 10? Probably. Oh, Maybe geez, they've bit, aged him a bit. Bit of Peter Pan syndrome. Oh, fuck that. Oh, yeah. Do you ever see conspiracy theories on, like, Ash? No, that was should've a few podcasts ago, man. Sorry, you missed that. You missed that. Sorry, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, there's no, one no. that he's been in a coma ever since, and that's why he's still ten now. Ever since I know he oh, gets knocked class. out in the first few episodes. I've heard of that, but again, so, look, we can't, we can't. Yeah, discuss sorry, it. sorry, too late. Sorry, yeah. sorry, man. Maybe next. We'll have one. to time travel back and do it, and then. we'll put it into the last one. <laughs> we'll let it back in. Oh, he's got it. Yeah, so Pokemon was good, and uh, then the second generation of it came out in like '99, and it like it was like the perfect game sequel ever. Yeah, because it just it it added its another 100 Pokemon and another eight worlds and it was set three years later. Then you go back, no, eight worlds, what am I on about? Eight gyms? You fought gyms, didn't you? you? got badges. Cool. And then you went back to your old place and what you do at the end, what's the last boss? You, you fight yourself from the last game. That's a genius idea. And then they kept going and they were shite from then on, I believe. Okay. I be- Brilliant. I think I might have played it's one. It's funny, it's very like early telltale signs of how big mobile gaming is going to be. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that in the morning, but um, for now... <laughs> In the one, morning. one thing as well is like again we're at the start of the podcast we're like video games that's for nerds, nerds. that's for the boys playing Call of Duty and FIFA yeah. one thing uh, when I was researching researching for this podcast is that how huge video games ended up like fueling my interests okay fun fact so uh, going from early Tony I didn't have it but one of my neighbours had Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 Oh, yeah. And the soundtrack of that really influenced my kind of later... Pop punk. Pop punk. Yeah. Punk and pop punk. Yeah. Now, people might say that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is a better soundtrack. Look, it's all good. <laughs> you can have it's your It's all opinion, he had at the time, lads. But that's what I played. And I remember there was song. I remember just being a child and hearing those songs and being like, this is... I love these songs. These are amazing. And then it it, it, it really influenced my taste. Um, the rock band games, when I was a teenager, I had Green Day and Beatles rock band who... At the time, were my two favorite bands, and wasn't I lucky to have two games that were my two favorite bands? Yeah, those Ro- games taught me how to play the drums. L- literally, it did. In fairness, because Rock Band was a funny one, or Guitar Guitar Hero was the first one, and like, then made. Rock Band kind of. But Rock Band, because you had the drum thing, actually was like, like obviously Guitar Hero wasn't gonna fucking help no. anyone play guitar. Let's but be, drums, let's be real. But you drums are still it hitting did. the rhythm. You have to learn how to sync up your both hands and your right foot. Exactly. To the kick pedal. Yeah, yeah. And it's I learned how to do ba- very basic beats. But then from there on, you and then you see, because when we were sixteen, we started playing music mm. in, in band in wasted space. Yeah. Uh, check us out on <laughs> Bandcamp. Don't. <laughs> uh, no, do fucking rock on. Um, but I remember then in early band practice because this is the time when I was playing rock band. I jump and behind the drum kit. And I was like, oh my god, this is an actual transferable skill. And I, I, I like to brag when I'm talking to girls on Tinder Do that I can play, play drums. Do you play drums? Kind of. Not many, I can. There's not as many drummers out there as there are fucking guitarists, though. You know? Yeah. So it is, it's, look, it's fine to brag about it, Dara. It is. I can, I, right. can, I can technically, I can legally play and, drums. And I, <laughs> legally. And after you brag about uh, playing drums on Tinder, they ghost the girls, me. They ghost you they, then, uh, do they? Uh, okay, I don't know why it keeps happening. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because they There's know no way of knowing. you can't play drums. How dare you? They don't know that. You play guitar hero drums. But like, it's not Go only on. that, like, you know, fucking, uh, you know, Tony Hawk, Call of Duty, that got me into warmongering and got- imperialism. <laughs> Pokemon got me into trapping and fight, making to wild animals fight each make, other. Yeah, exactly. Literally. You know, um, to breed in wild animals, making them fight to the death. Cooking Mama got me into, you know. Cooking. Cooking your mom. 
<laughs> <laughs> yes. That's interesting, yeah. You see, I I like to play in video games, but I had kind of... I suppose when I was up to like 10 and stuff, I, I but I had some other interests. Like, I was more into like um, the stuff we were into, like fucking Beyblades and stuff when I was a kid. I liked being yeah. outside and, and like playing things outside. Like I, I was more too. into Don't the Game Boy. I was more into the Pokemon and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I did like a few like Simpsons Hit and Run. That was amazing. Oh, um, cracker. I agree, but I think in fairness, my parents did a good job of balancing it. There was there was always the rule in the house, which was only one hour of PlayStation or GameCube, whatever. Yeah. Now it always went over, but that would, they, they, just, they, they, they did their best. They tried to keep it to that, you know, you, you know sneak in a session here or there. But they no, I was still made, no, no, you go out and play with your friends and you go out and do other things. Yeah. And I did, so there was a nice balance. And that was the handy thing about the Pokemon. You could go out and play with your friends while doing that. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it funny, though, how that was a thing back in the day? It was like being so monitored on your time on video games. Yeah. Like, but you know, it's funny now. We're so addicted to our phones and scrolling. It's like, I, I, like, it's I like, wonder, yeah. Well, basically, the thing is, like, we're you know we're so addicted to our phones and scrolling. Now it's like, no, that's so mindless. It's like, why don't you watch some telly or play a video game, <laughs> a, then, b- a bit of art, a bit of story? It, that's so, uh, that's it's, so funny, yeah, isn't it? And it's like when we were kids, it was like you get off that then stuff. Again, uh, um, children aren't going through feeds per se; they're watching stuff on YouTube. No, I'm actually talking about adults there. I think okay, more. fair Not, Then children, like you know, or yeah, teens. Or do you whatever. know what? Yeah, get off it's your funny. phone and play fucking PlayStation. Play a game like the games that are coming out. Now, like that brings us to the point of how. Remember we, earlier we mentioned how no. they're more valued as art now. Let's let's talk about PS3 uh, onwards. No, I think they've always been. They are. They have obviously, it's but easy, I think they... it's easy. No, no, because it's easy for us to say like now they're really good, but. It's funny, the other week... They're more popular uh, uh, now. Uh, no, not necessarily either. Uh, here's a point. I'm a, a few weeks back, um, the Unreal Engine. So games are run inside engines, basically. There you go. That's that's how they work. That's all you need um, to know. That's all you need to know. So I think Unreal, who are big game engine, right? They did a, a demo of their next gen uh, game engine, which is going to be included in games that you'll be playing on the next gen of consoles, the, the PS5, PS5 yeah. the Xbox 2. Six... Um, Whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, the Xbox X? I don't know. Who fucking cares? Ne- the next but, Xbox. But it was nice. Me and literally my parents, I was like, come on, look at this. And we brought, went around the telly and I I, I played them the new the new um, yeah. kind of playthrough of it. Yeah, it's And everyone was just blown away. We we're all blown away. And my dad had made the point. And it's nice. Like he's like every kind of 10 years, we sit down and we look at the, the new kind of demos of what's to come and we're blown away. Absolutely, yeah. But on that point is like every 10 years, we think graphics can't get better. Because I remember seeing like the the demos for the PlayStation Three high definition graphics. But genuinely look back at that away. now and you're like, oh, yeah. so they would have been like that in the early nineties. Like, funny. oh my god, that's a person and you can move it. Yeah. What? Oh my god, their mouths move. Yeah. That's like in the movies. So it's always been mind blowing. It's always been a huge. You're right, actually. Art. But no, no, yeah, I don't, Just I don't mean sorry. to say, yeah, but they're say probably sorry. more in the mainstream valued as that, like the fact that you have games that have these amazing stories, mm. The Last of Us, that was the yes. end of, and Red Dead Redemption, they're two ones that I connected with a lot. Yeah, they're one, two, but, just be they're the ones you've played but then 10 years oh, ago loads, there was Skyrim 10 years before that there was something else and there's yeah there's always yeah, been sure, big, they're, they're, big amazing sprawling look, games I'm only talking shit I don't know what I'm saying no you're fine look, but you can only relate to the ones that you've played that's true yeah and, and you're, you're kind of late to the game which is grand yeah, no bother yeah a bit like you know um, I've always liked as you say you all like video games you just don't know it yeah. but um, they're just they're just they are just everywhere obviously there have been games with stories and stuff before but I think obviously with the with the technology they have now, yeah. they can really expand that. Like Red Dead Redemption 1 and came out in like 2010, didn't it? You yes. played that and you were blown away, weren't you? I would remember being up at Galway with my grandparents. Um, my granddad, my granddad at the time, I was going to say, well, yes, when he was still alive, um, he saw me playing it, right? Yeah. And he was like, oh, what Western is that? There you go. And I was like, oh no, this is a, this is a video game. And he's like, what? Yeah. And in fairness for the time, it was mind blowing, you know. Yeah. It looked real, like real life, and then you look back and you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it, it is funny." And um, the Last of Us one, yes, that came out a couple of years later. It was late. It was like a send off of, of that generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That story obviously is fucking amazing. Like, yeah, it's yeah. it's hundred percent. It's so good. And um, I only played that two or three months ago. I played that seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, I played the remastered version of PS4. So what I played yeah. was probably like better graphics and stuff but it was still like the gameplay of it held up quite a bit today yeah but then they made the sequel recently and playing that game i got so invested in and so did you that uh yeah 
I genuinely forgot that I was looking at three dimen- three three D animated uh, yeah, people. Yeah, what I do love it, 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 that's the storytelling at the end of the day. It is, but it, but it's also the graphics too because you you see oh, these yeah. the, the micro expressions they can get in people's faces mm-hmm. now that you you're just like yeah it's just I'm just looking at a human. Yeah, no, I remember I remember when that technology was being developed around LA the time of LA Noir. Um, that was like the first game that had just like. A, a motion, a face, facial motion capture. Okay. As far as I'm aware, correct me if Don't I'm wrong. Quote him. Um, but Don't. I remember they had the actor. He was in Mad Men, the blonde guy. Um, he oh. played the main character. Oh, doubt. Yes. <laughs> what was his name? The again? doubt me in, in Mad Men. <laughs> yeah. He had the eye patch in the end, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Intro- oh yeah. He got shot in the eye, didn't he? I think it was as exciting as being shot. Yeah. That was a good show. It was a brilliant show. Anywho, anywho but it, they had just a load of cameras and dots around his face. And they're like, oh, I remember when they were releasing it, it was like, oh my God, you, it's it's not just an animator animating someone's face. It's a literal human face. Yep. And now it's like, it's gone it's absolute next level. Absolutely. And yeah, I think that helps with immersion. Immersion is the real thing. Immersion yeah. and amazing storytelling. Yes. Um, yeah, amazing storytelling. As you say, all, there's all the factors. I mean, like, I fucking, I, I, actually bawled at the yeah. end of The Last of Us 2. Uh, I ugly cried. Yeah, it very got an extremely visceral response out of us. And I was thinking, <laughs> it did though, and I was thinking about that. Oh, I was like, God, obviously yeah. there was this slight self-aware part of me that said, look at me, you know, this old-fashioned kind of, God, I'm crying at a video game. And I think, actually, no, it's like, Quite you invest, by, you know? Yeah, but it's like, yeah, but it's even more than a movie. Yeah. You invest 20-something hours into it. Or you, 60. You, yeah, yeah. If, a bigger if you want. game, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Red Dead Redemption 2, another one I shed a few tears for. Yes, brother. You know, you, you're you playing as this person, so you're, you're, you're experiencing, you're controlling them. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. you, you really bring yourself into it. And, it's um, just way bigger than a TV show or a movie, depending, maybe a TV show and so stuff. It, but, it, but yeah, you are the person, you are the character, you go through... Yeah. And 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 mm-hmm. that's it. Like and and I guess maybe that's what I meant about how it's they're more. I don't want to say they're more valued as art. I feel like that's. But the fact that you have games that can go on for that, that you have campaigns that can go on for that long now, so yeah. that extra time really, it, it probably gets more emotion out of you and stuff. Or not even emotion, but fucking anything. Yeah, brother. What do you think of um? What do you think of VR gaming? When I say that to you, oh, you never think? never gave it a go. Or, I or had- did I? I've done test demos in so in college and around towards the end of it. So this would have been, you know, geez, four years ago. At this stage, Christ, yeah. we did an we did like a module where we were had to create a VR game. Yeah, we really it was really you just had to make a game and then you could actually just play it in a VR environment. You put on the headset, and it's funny like people have been thinking as VR technology has kind of come about in the last five plus years and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger but it's never boomed mm. I remember being in London two years ago when they were selling like PlayStation VR but it's it's so expensive a headset is like first of all your games console is a, between I know, 500 and 1000 quid but then and your games are 70, 80 quid and oh I have to buy a headset that's 80 quid Yeah. sorry sorry 80 quid 400 quid yeah, you know it's expensive, and that's the tough thing about it, and that's why it's uh, it's such a hard thing. That's some you know, if you want real immersion, yeah, put on a headset and a set of headphones and look around. You are literally there, but I think that can nearly be too much. But um, well, I don't know though. I'd say it's going to become more normal and stuff. Yeah, I'd say it's going to be. It has. Crazy. That's, I've been watching it again, and from just being doing it in college, and this was so about you know twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen. Mm. And it's kind of the same. There's games being developed, but the thing is, it's not a big enough market, so they can't get enough funding to make big VR games. But eventually, when it becomes cheap, like anything, when it becomes like Deflation, we talked about, yeah. Well, yeah, like well, like we talked about, you know how only like um, people were experimenting on the technology back in the fifties and sixties, yeah. And then it wasn't until the seventies that it started to become commercial. Because you know, it's the same kind of principle. It's, it's the same idea. It's like it was too expensive back then, whereas now. Because you know what? Because you know what? Like, is the biggest in what's been massively booming instead? What mobile games? Yeah, they genuinely. I nearly Way couldn't bigger. believe that mobile I, games are bigger than any games console in the world. And I nearly, when I started noticing that in the last five or so years, I was nearly like, "Ah, oh, come on, boy, fuck's sake, mm-hmm. you got a fucking PS4 now, you know, and yeah. you got this." And I was like, "Come on, like, you know, come on." There's more people all over the world with phones than there is yeah. video uh, games consoles. It's funny, I actually have a friend living out in Vancouver in Canada and he's working as in a games development company. Mm. Literally designing stuff in, I don't know exactly his role, but he's working as part of a sure. a team. And it's a mobile It's mobile games and yeah. it, augmented reality, that's kind of where we're going. Um, oh, okay, so yeah. it's not, for context, if you just, in case you don't know, augmented reality, it's not virtual reality where it's all fake 
Augmented reality would be more so you hold up your phone or something and you can change things, add things, modify things to the world you're looking at in front of you. Cool. So it's just an augmented reality. Right. Yeah, so yeah. mobile gaming, augmented reality, that's uh, where he's working and that's where, you know, things are being developed more and the okay. technology is booming and I think that's very cool. That's very I cool, actually, yeah. sure, I worked um, a few years back, I worked for a mobile games company as nothing exciting as a fucking minimum wage customer service. But it was very funny to be part of that world. Mm. Do you know what 90% of our customers, our player base was? Where? India. Yeah. Ind- Indian kids. Yeah. It is so fucking huge. I think China Massive, is also yeah. a big market. I'm not as sure. But uh, India, I can say for sure. Yeah. And I think the reason why, now, you can absolutely, someone can say, nope, you're wrong. This Born is uh, this is my uh, this is my assumption as a fucking white man in the Born, Western. Born Dara, no. Please do. This is my assumption as a white man in the Western world. And so I could be completely off. Yeah. But I think it's because um, mobile phones are obviously cheaper and you can get cheap Androids for less than 100 quid. Yeah. And you can play all your games on it. Whereas a games console is way more expensive. And I think, and I don't want to, I don't. Yeah, I know. I'm just really acknowledging my pri- privilege and I really don't want to assume for a whole subcontinent to be like, yeah. I don't want to say they're poorer, but. Yeah, I, from, I don't know. We'd have to look into more of that. We obviously didn't. It's all right, boy. No, no, no. It's because, no, it's because I worked in it and yeah. it's huge. No, mobile that, that, gaming is fair, huge in I, India. That's probably a fair assumption. Really. So yeah. I, I, I think I just yet yeah, to say, say the point. I think because of why it's so big is just because games consoles are way more expensive. Yeah. Maybe the the average family isn't making as much money, and it's easier to buy a kid a cheaper phone than it is to buy a fucking next gen sure. console. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know about that, but I, yeah, it's just, I that's think probably. But look, guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, do actually. If you yeah. want, it's All exciting. Right. It's something again. It's funny we we come across these topics that I can really nerd out on. Remember, yeah. we did like a, a superhero one, which is very comic book. Yeah, love my comic books. I love my games. I love my dog. Wait, she's dead. Do you know, oh, really? Yeah. She, no. Still love her though. Oh, yeah, Goldie forever. Can't stop, man. Never stop. Uh, you'll never forget we'll ha- your first dog. We'll have a chance at some um, some audience participation. Audience hey? participation. So, so we reached out and asked our glorious audience, "What are your first games, guys?" Or no, was that was that the question? Or was I it think the- it was your first experience of video games? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's be fun to go through. Okay, do you want me to go through the first one? Just go through them all. You're Mister Read Through, sure. Am I? Is that me? No, is it? I think that's your role. Yeah, you okay. read through, and I I, me- I I say something witty. Okay. First video game, this is Kiki. First video game I played was Resident Evil on the PS1. At the Mm. start of the game, when that one zombie turns up, turns around from... Your spelling is worse than mine when I'm writing. (laughs) There's when with W-J-E-N and from is F-E-O-M. That's just mashing the keyboard. (laughs) That's exactly what I do. Um, At the start of the game, when that one zombie turns around from eating and comes at you, had nightmares for years as I was only fucking six at the time. Oh, nice. Great parent and dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I never yeah. played that one, Resident Evil. That's a really popular one, isn't it? Resident Evil is huge. It's, yeah. it's, it has a movie franchise and they're oh. all fucking cat. Oh, are they? They're, they're hilariously bad. Oh, but like, okay. it, like it has its massive cult following. People are like, no, it's class. But oh, objectively, cool. they're, like, they're no fucking... Sure. Star Wars... Um, no, Resident Evil is huge. I think I I've played game. I think they had one as an arcade version. I, like I feel like Plex. I remember I that. I think I've played an arcade version. Yeah, of Resident I, I Evil. think the same. Yeah. What Sorry. about Stardoll? What Stardoll? I don't know. Stardoll was this flash game where this was Susie. Oh Stardoll yeah. Stardoll was this flash game where you had a character and you dress her up and set her. Apartment interior and shit. I only remember this recently, but I spent literally years on it. Also, Sims, so it's probably similar to Sims. I yeah, think, Sims yeah, they're good. Um, Flash games. I forgot about Flash games. Uh. That was a huge part of our kind of my maybe. So th- I want to say ages like ten to thirteen, just going on to like Flash games websites, googling Flash games, and just playing browser games. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Something to. Put someone in an apartment, set yeah. the apartment on fire. Speaking of set, set the setting apartment a, on fire, setting yeah. apartments on fire, The Sims, that was mighty crack. Oh, did you set in The Sims, did you? Oh, loved. Well, yeah, but I love The Sims. The Sims, Sims 2 by... Actually never had it, but I used to play it in one of my friends' house and it was crack, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Kieran said uh, the first was, Call, first was Call of Duty Black Ops, so this person what? obviously got into games probably later. Are you maybe, 11? Maybe, maybe, they might be 11, you know. You should be listening to this podcast. Should be listening to all the swear words <laughs> I said. No, um, first was Call of Duty Black Ops, uh, taught, taught me about Vietnam War and gave me an interest in history. So that brings back to your point earlier. 
of how it influences um you know Tony Hawk's Intra- I played I played Black Ops it was a cracker yeah. I was probably about okay I was about 15 maybe when it came out I can't really remember rough let's just say that sure yeah that's also true but keep in mind uh <laughs> take it with a pinch of salt that it's an Amer- American games company so yeah. it's always going to make America look good. So even if they might like include, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, it's still going to be a bit biased. But um, yeah. yeah, no, but fair enough. You can still learn a lot from video games. Absolutely. Yeah. Trying to think. Oh, you know what I fucking learned a lot from? What? Where in the world and where in time is Carmen San Diego? Do you remember that in primary school? What? That was one of the games we could play. I remember Windows ninety five. Oh yeah, I fucking loved those games. Yeah, when we used to we're go on, the... on the chase and we're chasing and the magic school history. Bus. Where remember, in time <laughs> is Carmen Sandy? Remember, remember the I used to like that one. But remember the magic school. The bus. magic school loved bus kills it. again. By loved it. By loved our educational games. But yeah, so, so yeah, no, no, you can you can do yeah. a lot of learning. Tom said, uh, kids. We'll never know the struggle of needing to buy a special light just to play the Game Boy Advance in the dark. That is so... I forgot about that. It was such a dark <laughs> thing. So we'd all be out there playing, you know, all the kids. We'd all be playing outside. And mm-hmm. um, we'd be like, oh, we can't see if it's sunny. So we'd be like, can we go inside? And they'd be like, no, it's sunny. You have to get out. We'd be like, oh, but we can't see. And then you could buy this <laughs> special light and it drained the battery like mad. Right. But I remember that, yeah. Struggle back. Yeah, the what was it? Was... It was the Advanced had the lit, the backlit screen. Was that no, it? that was the Advance SP. It was the next one, but the one before that, the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, oh, that didn't have a back. It didn't. Screen. Like it was Jesus like, oh my Christ. god, it, like was, it was awful. Daryl Sullivan said, uh, "Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider, a was, classic." Did you ever play Tomb Raider? I never play, had yes, it, but it was. Cool. I played I just, a version of Tomb Raider on Sky TV. Remember, you know, remember Be- Beehive Bedlam by. Remember oh, that? that was a great video game, that was man. A but yeah, they had games it. on Sky, and I remember they had a version of Tomb Raider. I never had Tomb Raider. Um, but I, I'm, I'm very aware. Yeah, the Lara Croft. Lara Croft. Yeah, someone actually mentioned Lara Croft, because uh, they also said Tomb Raider Four, back in the age of triangle shaped tits. That's uh, what she Roisin did, said. She had classic, you know, classic, classic triangle boobs. Classic triangle bo- boobs. Oh, Rayman. What's the story with a head? And oh, no, he had no hand, no arms. No, yeah, he says here, Rayman. What's the story with a head and with no neck hands and no arms? No neck and, hands. I don't know, no neck hands. With no arms and feet, with no legs. Also Tarzan, because it was his class. I'm trying to make out what that means, but look. <laughs> fair play, Bill. Yeah, I... No Ray- neck hands. No, no ne- I know. Th- Rayman, oh, no. Rayman had no neck, and he had no arms or no legs. Hadn't he not? He had hands. He'd be floating around. I liked that game. That was cool, boy. I remember it. I played it. I think I rented it. I think my buddy had it. Remember, m- it. hey, fellow millennials listen to this podcast. Remember when you could rent games from ExtraVision? Oh, oh I used to love doing that, Loved man. it. Cooking Mama on my brother's DS. The theme song is still a bop. Never played it. Wait, you were on about Cooking Mama, weren't you? I was aware of it. I didn't play it, yeah. Oh. Sorry. So you didn't cook your mom. I did cook my mom. Jack said, Pandemonium on the PS1. In hindsight, a terrible game. Then Jack and Daxter games finished them again over the lockdown. The nostalgia made me rock hard throughout. (laughs) Top game. (laughs) There you go. Bit of nostalgia gaming for the lockdown. Boy, I did it as well. Oh, yeah. Did I do any nostalgia? Pandemonium. I never heard of that, man. I'm currently doing... uh, On the PlayStation Store, they do free games every month. And they re-release the remastered Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. A huge game of my teenage years, and I'm getting to replay it. I'm like, yeah, this is fucking cracking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember coming home after school, logging on with all the boys. It'd be like ten to twenty of us just going mad, killing, killing heads. Killing oh, heads. I remember sweating through my shirt. <laughs> just how intense and fun it was. It's mad. Loved it. it. Mm. And the last one, Gary said, "Crash Bandicoot, baby." What a good way to have the last interaction. Because yes, that's mm. my favorite. Apart from that or Pokemon, they'd be my two it's funny, the ones yeah. that brought me all the way back. So that, that I loved as a kid and I could still pick up and play at the odd time, you know? Yeah, but... Play at the time. Class. Unbelievable. I'm trying to think of any obscure stuff on the fringes because we've been very... Oh, triple A. Oh, PlayStation. Yeah, but that's the thing because we're not like crazy. Like someone into video who's really into video games now, like really into it, is probably listening to us just going... Oh, yeah. I, I genuinely... You know. I remember like you think I'm into games and then my college yeah. course, all the guys are well into games sure, and yeah. I feel like an absolute chump. Well, look, I'd be cream, like, ah, the, I the, play my PlayStation. But, They're like, oh, console gamer. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know what? Like I, I do love video games even though I don't play them much, but that's literally because I don't have the time. And look, the cream rises to the top so I'm going to play the games that I know you play the triple A's yeah, yeah I'm gonna, I am know that if I play Red Dead Redemption I'm going to have a great time or I mean, fair enough. Thought or The Last we're, of we're, Us we're sofa gamers is that the fr- I don't know we're casual we're casual, casual gamers casual yeah like I, I really appreciate it though I've, I've, you know? I'm always just because I've kind of been playing games since day one day mm. one I never stopped 
Dead, dead one. Dead one. Is that what we call Dano? Dead. Sorry, who are you? Uh, Tim. Hi, Tim. I'm Dara. Hi, Tim. Will you listen to my podcast? Uh, yeah, if you give me 50 or. Okay. And with that note, we're going to say goodbye, I think. Are we? Oh. Yeah, we've, goodbye, we've hit that mark. Goodbye. Good, good friends, good friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. So now it's time to go. Lads, thanks so much for listening okay. to our podcast I'll where say, we talk about shite. Well, that's okay. Your man's still singing. That's okay. I'll we'll leave him off. very soon, um, I know. Yeah, if you like us, uh, share very this, um, share our podcast on your Instagram goodbye, or whatever social goodbye, media you're on. Goodbye, and could you bring it back a bit there? Friends, Just bring it back. Goodbye. Oh, that's fine. Goodbye. <laughs> um, yeah, support us on Patreon you if you want. I'm so distracted. I gotta goodbye, go and sing this song. And the goodbye. Bye, goodbye, just bye. Good friends, goodbye. Goodbye. Tomorrow, just like today. The moon, the bear, and the big blue house will be waiting for my harmonies to be in. Right. Goodbye. Alright, talk to you. See you guys.